All right, so uh, I have this object here, and I mean, just so you can see, it's not going to even show up, so it's not a big deal. And you can even, if you turn the sprite render off, it'll turn that off. Or you can just right-click and remove this component altogether. But I just put it there so I could visually see it. Um, what I'm going to do, basically, is just add a script to this. So I'm just going to right-click, um, create a uh, script, and I'm just going to call it... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it death box because I feel fun today. Death box script, not with a space in it. Script. Good. And I'm going to double click to open that up. All right. Actually, we'll just go ahead and we'll drop onto this. And I'm just going to go ahead and name this death box. Death box. Okay. And there you go. Death box script. And this is a pretty easy script. So basically, we don't need any of this business. We only need um, one thing. So, and it's just going to say on trigger enter 2D because it's a 2D uh, node. And um, the parameter is going to be other. That's what we're going to name the variable of what gets um, that what enters there. So collider 2D. And boom. Boom. So basically what it's going to do is that um, this function gets triggered whenever something enters this as a trigger. And if you recall, uh, this death box, I made the collider a trigger, so it's not just a collider. Which means that things won't bump into it. Like when this falls, it won't hit it. It'll just go through it. That's basically the idea behind it. Because there's also collider enter, but um, we're going to use it as a trigger. So that's it's only being used for the purposes of things falling through it. So we're going to say, okay, on trigger enter, this will be triggered. It's going to store the collider of what gets uh, hits it into a variable called other, okay? Um, and basically, all we're going to do is we're going to do destroy, and that's just a built-in function. And the what we're going to send it uh, is going to be other. So the what collides with it, other dot game object. So um, the game object that's attached to other, which is the collider. And basically, it's just going to destroy whatever attaches uh, touches it. So uh, I'll just save that. I'll go back into here. Hope we don't have any weird errors. And now what you'll see when we play this, and my character goes off screen. So just keep an eye on player over here. You'll see. Actually, you can watch it in the screen here. Watch. Boop. It dies. Okay. It just uh, just destroys it which is useful. Um, you typically want to try and destroy things as much as you can because if you have a bunch of things that aren't, aren't even in screen or not in screen, there's no sense in having them there. It just uses up resources. So this way, um, and we'll, we'll tie up some other things to this as well to like make it um, like an end game and, you know, a menu and all that other business. But I just wanted to do a real simple um, basic uh, thing there. Uh, all right, so... Now what we're going to do is work on our enemy. Um, so this is going to be a little bit different. Um, yeah, so this is going to take a little bit. So I'm going to save this. Uh, all, right. all right, so now what I'm going to do is actually create um, my enemy and all of uh, that business. Okay, so I'm going to go my prefabs, and I'm going to grab my dragon, and I'm going to drop them up in here. And I'm going to create, and we're going to create um, an empty. And we're just going to call this dragon. Um, and I'm going to take uh, this, and I'm going to parent it to dragon here. Okay. Um, the reason being is I want, and actually, you know what I just realized? Okay. I'm going to take the box collider off of this. I wonder if I can copy this. Let me see. Copy component. And add component. Paste component is new. And let's see. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so we took, and I'm just going to right click and remove this component. And I'm going to drag this dragon into here. Okay, so we have a new one. And then this guy, I no longer need. I'm going to get rid of him. And let's see. Good. So now I just have this one. Um, there's a reason why we're setting it up this way. You'll see in a second. Okay. Um, all right. So I got this. I want to edit the collider, which is apparently there. Let's take. Okay. So this. Oops. Ah, open up. I got to reset this to zero and zero. Okay. So that's back at origin. And then I got to grab my box collider. And it's a little bit off. 
Um, so I'm going to take the Y size and make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to drop her. Oops, not that. Actually, this is going to go this way too, but um, like that. And I just want to drop it down a little bit like that. So basically, actually, you know what? I'm going to make it a little bit wider because this is actually going to be the way um, that it's going to uh, work. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so good. All right, so I got that. Um, so I'm going to attach a script to this. That's basically going to make this thing walk. Okay, just it's going to go back and forth, back and forth. It's relatively simple. So I'm just going to make this one an enemy controller. So create JavaScript and let's call it enemy controller script. Boop. And I'm going to double click to open it up. There it shows up, and I'm just going to go ahead and drop it onto uh, this, okay? So let me just double check. Okay, good. Yep. All right. Yeah. Okay. And good. All right. Just want to check something real quick, actually. See what happens. Yeah. All right. That's kind of what I was afraid would happen. So I'm actually going to take this rigid body here, and I'm going to remove this component as well, and I'm actually going to apply it to the parent project or the parent object. And uh, I'm going to turn constraints. I'm going to go back to rotate Z. Let's just double check, make sure it hits. Good. Okay. So I'll make sure we're all set there. All right. Good. Um, and we're going to go ahead and just put this over here for now. All right. And uh, enemy control script. Good. Sorry, attached. All right. So here we go. So uh, I'm going to need a couple of variables. It's actually relatively simple. So I'm going to need a variable that controls the speed, which is pretty obvious. So enemy speed. And it's going to be a float. And we will determine how fast we want it to move. And we're going to do a variable for the walk direction, we'll call it. Okay. And actually, you know what? Be yeah, we'll just do that. Walk direction, and we're going to do a bool, oops, a boolean. And I'm just going to go ahead and set it to true to start with, just so that something's set onto it. Um, function start, I do not need. And function update, I do. Because basically, I want this to constantly run. So it's actually going to be pretty simple. And I'm going to say, okay, if, and we're going to say walk direction. Okay, so, um, you know what, this might make it easier. We're going to say if walk right. So if it's walking right, this will probably be easier for you to understand. Uh, if walk right, I want to do what's in this code here. Okay. Oop. Turn insert back off. And I want it to transform. So transform, if you remember, it's up here. Transform dot position, or sorry, dot local scale. Um, scale dot x. And I want to set that to a value of one. Now it's naturally at a value of one. It's just that if it goes the other direction and I go back to walking right, I need to set it back to one. So that's why I have to put that in there. Um, because if it's going the other one, it'll be negative one. And also, if it's walking right, transform dot um, translate, which basically means move it, right? And we're going to translate it on a vector two, okay? Because that's what this is doing. And basically, it's going to be minus enemy. Me enemy speed and zero times time dot delta time time dot delta uh, time. Uh, basically, this is just a way of oops, put, put space there. Um, it, it's basically multiplying time times this, and that way it'll allow it to over time it will add to it um, to make it move. All right. And that's what I want to do there. But we're going to say else. If it's not walking right, obviously it'll be walking left. Uh, it's going to kind of do the opposite. So we're going to take this thing here. Whoosh, control C. Control V. And tab. But it's going to be a minus here. And good. So this might seem kind of weird. Uh, we don't actually change this. Because if the local scale is reversed... This way, it's always going forward in a sense, okay? 
So when it's negative, the reason I'm doing negative speed is that uh, it's going to make it go this way. Um, this way, it's always going forward. So if it's scaled flipped, it's still going to be moving in that direction. So you don't actually change the enemy speed. It's always going to be the negative. Um, it might need to be positive. I have to look to see where it ends up being. But I, I think it's negative for some reason. Okay. Boom. And that will actually make it move. So if you watch, we'll go in here just so you can see it. Hopefully I don't get no errors. Or I get no errors. I gotta change my enemy speed here. So we'll do, let's say two, because I don't really know what it needs to be. And I'll hit play. And there he goes. Okay. It's pretty amazing. Um, all right. And he died because he fell into the box. So watch. I'll uncheck walk right. Now watch. He's going to walk um, the other direction. And actually, it pushes the character itself. So there you go. It's going to push her over a cliff and she's going to die. All right, good. Um, so that's that's what it does. It makes it go left and right. Now, here's the thing. Um, that's good. This all works. And, you know, has a, uh, this actually should be walk left. Because you can see it's actually walking left. It doesn't actually matter. It's just for the sake of my OCD. All right. So the other thing I need to do is this. And you're going to see what we're going to do. We're going to do a... Um, a function oops a function on trigger enter uh 2d okay on trigger enter 2d and we're going to store it what it collides with so collider into um other 2d it's a 2d um when uh when you do this later on and we're doing 3d this will actually just be collider and just be on trigger enter not 2d but you have to make it specifically for 2d because that's what we're working in okay what we're gonna say um is this uh so we're gonna have it do two different things um well we'll just do this first so you get an idea of it. so we're gonna say if the other dot tag, okay, so if the tag of what we hit equals equals means if it's equal to, if you just do equals one equal sign, it's you're assigning it. Two equals means if it's 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 a comparison. Um so if it's equal to player, right? Because oops, it's gotta be capital. If you remember, that's what the tag we put on player is. So basically, if it runs into the player, um it's going to be uh, it's going to do this bit of code here, tab. And in this case, it's going to be destroy. And it's going to destroy this dot game object. Okay, so this is like a weird um, shorthand. Basically, when you do this, it means what it means itself, and then itself in the game object. So um, itself, the game object this is attached to, which in this case is the enemy. So basically, if it runs into the player, it's going to die. Which is kind of crappy. We're going to make it so we can kill the player too. But then we'll do it in a little bit different way. The other thing I'm going to do is this. I'm going to set up little invisible blocks here and here. And we're going to say if the other, which I haven't done this yet, tag. So if the tag of the other thing is, um, we'll just say turn. I'll name it turn. What it's going to do is this bit of code. Um, uh, it's going to do this. It's going to say if walk left. So if it's walking left, it's going to walk left. And we're going to say that is um, false. So basically, it's going to take walk left and make it, oops, sorry, false. Um, but uh, we'll say else, I have dyslexia, I think, um, uh, walk left, come on, and we will say true. Okay, so basically, if, uh, if it hits the turn block, and if currently walking left is true, then what's going to do is going to make it false, so it's going to make it turn around. But if it's currently false, it will make it true, so it'll turn around the other direction. So basically, if it's going one way, it'll make a flip and it'll go the other way. All right. Um, so then we need to do is just make the blocks that when it hits them, and it's just going to be these invisible things that will make that happen. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that, and we will do that. Then.